is on out. Woo! Holy shit, I knew it too. And when I looked you in the eye when I said, I knew that I was right too, Lockie. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Wine for People. This is a blind tasting show. We have three wines to taste today uh, and kindly supplied by our dear friends at Different Drop uh, who sort out all of these brackets and they come up with the concepts and everything which is just amazing to have uh, as a part of the show. If you would like to try the wines we taste today, hit the link below. There's a little sidebar to go and actually go to the Wine for the People segment on their website where you, if you add the discount code you get a nice little kickback for the wine. It helps out the guys a different drop and also helps out the channel massively as well. Now, today, uh, we have to guess the terroir. Basically, which is we're trying to guess the soil type that all of these wines uh, ex uh, exhibit, they're, what they're grown in. So, you know, they're from different regions all across the world, but the similarity between those regions is the type of soil that they're grown in, uh, which is pretty amazing and very challenging. This is like top tier, like wine guessing challenge stuff. So this will be really, really tough. Uh, and as always, please like and subscribe and help support the channel. Uh, let's not muck around too much more. Let's get into it. Wine number one. We have, we're, we're picking terroir, soil types. All right, white wine, golden hued, brilliant clarity, slight green highlights, kind of interesting. Looks filtered and it smells like lemons and salt and it smells like, yeah, it smells like it's going to be a really crisp Chardonnay. Very nice. It's got this kind of waxy, savory, steely, mineral flintiness. Um, very, got some Italian vibes to be honest. Um, kind of sparkly, little acidity. Um, no, it's very pretty um, and it's very easy to drink, uh, but it's definitely savory. But it's very yummy. Like it's a very like a yummy little table white wine. It's something to write home about, but it's very delicious. Mm -hmm. That's probably one of the nicest white wines we've had on the show in the last couple of weeks. Very luscious, almost to the point of having some kind of like sweetness to it. Um, I don't believe, it could be residual sugar. I don't believe it is though. I think it's just such a, a, a luscious style of great variety. No, no, I do not like that. Nope. Oh, wow. It's one of those wines that someone served me. I'd sip at it until I got to the point where I could just guzzle the rest of it and move on to something else. Um, yeah, no. Ah, uh, soil type? Fuck, I don't know. Jesus. Ow, yuck. Yum. No. Chardonnay, maybe. God, I hope we didn't make that. Uh, lime oily, mineral, savory, delicious table white wine. No real... Not really indicating whether I'm going to be able to guess what soil it's going in though. Um, so a bit, bit of a challenge there. Uh, soil type, I'm thinking... Reclaimed uh, hard rubbish depot potentially is what's giving it that sort of. It just tastes like genuinely. It tastes like shit. Like I, I don't. I'll stop. I'll stop banging on about. Other boys will like it. Anyway. All right, wine number two, medium bodied red. Oh, gorgeous though. It smells like black tea. Like straight up, like like fresh black tea. It's qu quite remarkable. Like burned sort of thing. Um, I like it. I like the smell of it a lot more than taste of that one let's see i'm actually learning something here because there's a characteristic that these two wines share that i don't like that can get thoroughly fucked yeah it's got this sort of like hot finish to it this is volcanic soil that's my that's my theory volcanic i've heard of that in wine making terms before like mount etna or something like that maybe chewy very savory nothing too outrageous to be frank. Like it's just a very nice little table white red wine. It's easy to drink, it's got some structure, it's got some interest, but again, this is this is not going to change the game. This is not blowing my brain apart, but that's not what all wines are supposed to do. Very chewy, sinewy tannins. I'm not too sure what that means in reference to terroir, but this is kind of giving me Loire Valley vibes, to be honest. Part of that is probably me considering the Brett in it and the style kind of lends itself a little bit further towards Cabernet Franc. The aftertaste, it just feels like all the flavor melts away and you just get this heat or something coming through. Um, I think it's, it'll be some Italian varietal. It's an Italian variety of red. It's not neb, it's not got enough tannin for that. It might be Nero. Nero, three bottles and I'll pay 30 bucks for it. Savory, sapid, really cool. Um, but again, I'm only gonna get three. I'm gonna spay 32 bucks. 
code to Rome. Uh, and wine number three, we have uh, a much more brilliant clarity red wine, uh, faded rim, very, very uh, sort of amazing purple highlights here. Oh, it's by so far and away the wine of the lineup. And it does have a little bit of that aftertaste, but nowhere near as much as the other two. But at the front, it's like those jellies that you used to have as a kid, like the little plastic ones that are about yay big, and you take them for recess and you like suck the jelly out of it. That's what it's first like, like the grape jelly of that. To be honest, um, just because, you know, I think this is gen like, so gamma, I have a feeling it's Beaujolais, which has just got that Beaujolais-ish quality. And particularly where this grape is grown around the world, is grown on uh, pockets with, which has got clay soils, like pretty, pretty he heavy clay soils. It tastes like Grenache, and Grenache is typically grown in sandy base soils. Um, I typically won't preference uh, soils that are very clay rich. I think it might be Pinot, just because it's got this nice little floral finish on it as well. I'll take six of it and I'll pay $50 a bottle. And yeah, I'm sticking with volcanic soil just because like, what else am I gonna say? Like limestone, sedimentary, like, I don't even know. Wine's outside of my area of expertise and then outside of my outside of expertise is soil type, so. Uh, look, I'm gonna go with clay. Power, rich, generosity, sinewy tannin, very massive textures in all of these wines, which is typically what I would associate with great varieties that are, are grown in clay-based soils. They tend to be a little bit more muscular. First thing that I've tasted, I've gone, I know, I feel like I know exactly where that's from. So going from that, I'm going the Beaujolais terroir of clay and limestone. Uh, so we'll get the boys in and see what they think. Gentlemen. Yes. Three wines. Yes. Terroir, right. but soil type. Yeah. Um, I might have gotten this so wrong that not only did I get the wrong soil type, I might have said something that's not a soil type. So let's see okay. how we go with this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about soil. Yeah, I don't know about dirt. Okay. Like, like you know, yeah. even for like even for the most educated, this is fucking challenging. Yeah. Like this is not easy. No. And, and I, I got to admit, like, I didn't approach this with a large degree of conviction. I approached no. this overlaying what I what I've I don't know taught to recognize in a wine mm -hmm. and then so this is like a massive sort of <laughs> trick shot for me that's yeah that's funny like a loon shot i'll, I'll okay. explain to you how my methodology once we get into it and i think it's quite opposite to what you were doing right. <laughs> okay right. well well, like, like, well let's probably reveal our our guesses at soil profile now okay. um so brendan what did you have a go at calcareous clay okay interesting mm. i also said clay uh, i said clay over limestone that's kind of was just my thing I um I also said calcareous glass, I said volcanic. I just said volcanic. I mean, which is a soil type. Hey, there we go, that's a winning my books, we're off. You're on, at least you're not wrong there. I mean, to be honest, like, could, like, I mean, I, I'd be surprised if these were volcanic. Um, to Same. Be honest. I'm just like, I'm like trying to. I, <laughs> I sure wouldn't be surprised that Henry got it right in a loon shot. Uh, but yeah, it's 100%. Happened enough. But it's just like, I think about volcanic wines generally, and these yep. aren't typically that. Um, Lockie, can you reveal to us what the soil profile was? This is volcanic. Ah! It, let's go! Fuck this, I'm out. Woo! Holy shit, I knew it too. When I looked you in the eye when I said volcanic, I knew that I was right too, Lockie. Ah! <laughs> Alright, so you know what you know what the funny thing is? You wanna know why I thought these were volcanic? Why? So I smelled the second one and it smelled like bricks and you need a kiln to make bricks. You know what's a big kiln? A fucking volcano. <laughs> Holy shit. I need a cigarette. <laughs> you need a cigarette. I need to lie down. Jesus back rub. Oh. Second wine's from Mount Etna. I'm gonna lose my shit. I honestly think it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I like. I thought the first one was like an Italian white wine, so I'm guessing it's probably like <laughs> Caracante or could yeah. be Fiano. I wasn't huge on it. It was pretty, pretty just neutral white wine. This was Caracante. my least favorite wine that we've had in months. Really? It was was um, yep. Uh, I actually didn't mind it. It was probably my favourite white we've had in a while. Uh, I did only buy one bottle for 20 bucks. So oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, Wait, I'm what? Honest, well, I don't need that many of these. Um, but I do, I think Caracante is a really good shout now. What's that thing in That's the middle true. of the palate? Oh, it's like mineral. 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 So there's, yeah. there's an unctuous sweetness to this, which I was like really sort of like vexed by. But I think anyway. it, it tastes like rotting fruit. Sorry, to me. One for 20 like bucks. Uh, I got uh, three for 26. One for 15. 
Lucky. Santorini. Santorini. Santa Santa Good old ass well, wine strikes again. <laughs> I mean, Henry yes. would agree with that. Genuinely. Uh, well, volcanic sandy soil. There we go. That's pretty interesting. I. We were talking about. We were talking about this before. Where like Australian winemakers just don't go and actually taste a lot of the great varieties that they're planting in the ground now, like in their home origins. Yeah. I think like there's a lot of acetico coming into Australia right now. A lot of buzz around acetico, and I'm like, really? It's the first time I've ever heard of it. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is an acetico sort of deal? Yeah. It's not like it's a world famous great variety that everyone knows and <laughs> that commands like for a while. higher prices and all that oh. kind of thing. Yeah, now there's there's more interesting things out there. Uh, moving right along, uh, very like kind of savory, like Sarari kind of mid-bodied red wine, but that probably leads it down the uh, bloody Norello Mascalese. Mid? I was mid, yeah. yeah. Total mid. I quite liked it, but three bottles. I I thought that this was a Mount Etna Nero. I don't know if they make Neros there, but they, they, they do. I mean, it's a bit niche, like that variety on Etna. It does yeah. exist. It, no. It's grown on the same island, um, but they don't they don't grow it up on that particular part of it. Yeah. Um, if it, if it, if it is in Mount Etna Nero, that is a very small planting of it. Really well made black tea, like Earl Grey tea. Yeah. Hundred percent. I, I, the more I drink this, the more I like it, actually. I said three bottles, but I might take it up to six. I mm. quite like this wine. It was quite refreshing after I was previous. at three at 32. I just thought it was a bit too savoury. Uh, one at 30. Oh 60. Oh, my God. Jeez, volcanic wines are just expensive. This was just grown on the table. We should get a brick kiln and just, just cook bricks down and then put it on our own vineyard. We should get a volcano. Hey! Yeah. La Maresca. I don't, I don't think, I think this is the, uh, which means it's a blend. red, no? IG, it's, it's IGP, so I think it's a blend. I think it might be like a Norello Frappato brand blend. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Mm. So these guys are just at the base of Etna, no, uh, yep. just to the west. Uh, west of it, just as you start going down to Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> the man's stoked. The man's so pumped with himself. Literally. He <laughs> literally he smells he it. He couldn't pick Malbec last week and he was raised on it. But fuck smelled. me, he can, he can pick things that he has never tasted before in his life. <laughs> smelled this and I'm like, that smells like man out there to me, baby. Oh my God. Somebody help me. Um, but like really great producer um, <sighs> that has some like fantastic wines, but this one did, probably just didn't show well today. Um, and for me, this is my favourite of the, yeah. the line. I agree. This oh, is 100% uh, my favourite. Number two. Number three. Number three. Oh, number three is. Yeah, yeah 100%. Number three is cracker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. juicy, bright, yeah. whole bunchy. 50 bucks gamut. and 12. Yes, please. All about it. I was at 12 and 78. Uh, I was $50 specific. Oh, no, sorry, wrong one. I was six and I didn't guess price, but I'd pay like 60 bucks for it. 50 bucks, six. 60 bucks, there you go. Cracker. Okay, it's worth Cracking it. Cracking wine. That is so delicious. It's the only one of the three that would be worth it. Volcano, Syrah. Oh, amazing. Upper Yarra Valley. Volcanic. Mm. There we go. <laughs> it says it right there on the label, fellas. <laughs> what? I didn't know there was a volcano in uh, the Yarra Valley. Um, wait, so, what? But they're so, they're really old. Yeah, they're like, super they're old. Like, they're so, like, I'm not sure our volcanic is Etna volcanic. No, 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 where it's still active. Or Santorini <laughs> volcanic. <laughs> <laughs> or Canary Islands volcanic. Mm -hmm. We don't have volcanoes in Australia. I mean, we do. But we have, I mean, in down Mount Gambia way, you could definitely Actually, argue we that. do have an active volcano in Australia that is erupting right now. Yeah? Yeah, it is like, I think something like 3,000 kilometres away <laughs> on an island that is owned by Australia. I genuinely yes. thought that this was going to be a setup and it's just like, and she's called your mum or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought you were going with that. That I would like. That I would like. Uh, I thought this was Crack the best wine. one. Yeah, pick this one Crack for me. Bang, bang, yeah, bang. big time. Henry. Woo! Go fuck yourself. Woo! <laughs> Honestly, uh, silly. There'll be someone else here next week. I'm yeah, retiring. Yeah, <laughs> this honestly, go out on a high. Yeah, out on a high. <laughs> out on a high. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Incredible. See you panic. next week. What? What? What?